Welcome to the Mindset Game podcast. I'm very excited and very grateful to have a special guest with us today, Clint Ober. Clint is the innovator behind the grounding movement, and he's the author of this book, Earthing the Most Important Health Discovery Ever. And you're going to learn why that is in this conversation. Prior to that, he was a 30-year veteran of the cable TV industry, pioneering the distribution of digital services through cable to personal computers, which led to the development of the first cable modems. Following a major health scare in 1995, he retired and embarked on a personal journey, looking for a higher purpose in life. Then, one day in 1998, a culmination of seemingly unrelated synchronistic events, some dating back to his early childhood, led to a groundbreaking revelation of grounding, also known as earthing. Over the past 20 years, Clint's work has catalyzed many of the over 20 research studies that have been published on the extensive health benefits of grounding which have shown impressive improvements in many, many, many uh, things like inflammation, sleep, pain, stress, anxiety, depression, uh, performance, and many more things. And you're going to learn about that today. Grounding has become a massive international movement, causing people to shed their shoes and reconnect electrically to the surface of the earth. And I am one of those people, which is why I'm very grateful and very excited uh, to have you here with us today. Welcome. Well, thank you, uh, Fred, for having me on the show. I'm just a real privilege to be here today. Thank you. Well, why don't we start, because I'm sure people are super curious if they have not yet heard of grounding. What in the world is grounding? What is grounding? Well, I have to go back just a little bit and start to explain that. Um, I was 54, I'm now 77, I'll be 78 in a few months, but I was 54 and I went through a, a situation where I had some health issues and I ended up uh, reti retiring from the business world. And, and then I um, decided that I wanted to do something, you know, not about money, but something about, I wanted to make my life about something more than, you know, just going out and making a buck and playing more with everybody. Um, <clears throat> so, but anyhow, I accidentally discovered or recognize that um, humans were no longer naturally grounded. When I was a child in the 50s and so on, 40s and 50s, well, <clears throat> we were barefoot all the time. Uh, we got home from school, we lost the shoes. Uh, the only time we ever put them back on was to go to an event, a special event or wedding or something. But anyhow, barefoot was common. And then, or we wore leather sole shoes and the leather shoes, were, we had to take them off, it rained and carry them because if they got wet, it would ruin them. And then we'd get, <laughs> and they were expensive. So anyhow, and we had to pass them down to our brothers, you know, the younger brothers. So, you know, times were different then. Um, but anyhow, so shoes, um, uh, in 1959, 1960, we invented plastics. The first thing we did is we put them on the soles of our shoes and then we made those shag green and orange and those ugly carpets and carpeted everything in the world and then made plastic linoleum type things and, and insulated. So no matter, so before 1960, most of the time you couldn't get ungrounded. You couldn't get off the earth. You were grounded at all times. And after 1960, now as you know, we're totally living insulated from the earth and you can't get back to the earth. You can't touch the earth. We don't even have parks. The parks are dog owned by the dogs. And, you know, so it, it's just hard to go barefoot. Um, so anyhow, but the concept is very simply when you touch the earth, your body is conductive, meaning it will conduct electric current. I mean, electric charge. Um, you can stick your finger in a socket and find out <laughs> real quick, but don't do that. Um, but the main thing is your body is conducted. And throughout all time prior to 1960, we were pretty much grounded. We wore leather salt shoes, we were barefoot, we worked on the earth, we grew things, we had our fingers in the dirt, we had, you know, we, our life was different, but we were totally involved with uh, nature and touching the earth. But So when you touch the earth, then your body conducts the negative surface charge of the earth. It's the same charge that we 
that goes up the ground rod and into your home and throughout your home, throughout all of your electrical outlets. And then anything is plugged in like your refrigerator is grounded. So the chassis of the, uh, the housing of the refrigerator is grounded. It's at earth potential, no charge when you're when it's grounded. Computers, are, for a long time, computers were not very stable. They would glitch up and you have to shut them down, bring them back up. And that was because of static electricity. So a lot of that has been eliminated. But the main thing is your body's conductive, just like your computer or refrigerator or any other piece of copper or metal. And so when you stand barefoot on the earth, then you become electrically uh, same as the earth, meaning you're at earth potential. You have the same amount of free electrons on your body as the earth does pro rata itself. Now, what is the benefit of that? It, it took us 20, well, it took us 10, 12 years to really figure it out. But as soon, <clears throat> the, the first thing that showed up when we were doing our research or what promoted us to do the research was that we learned that if you ground yourself, um, that if you have inflammation back at that time, the word inflammation was not in the current literature. Uh, this is back in 204 is when inflammation started to surface. But before then, if you had, so when we would find people that have pain, like arthritic flares or uh, chronic pain, you know, like MS or whatever, we'd ground them and the pain would stop. And we couldn't figure out why. We did, we had no idea. And I there's a long story that goes with it, but but basically uh, I made an observation in recognizing that we all wear shoes now. And then I went home and I started measuring with uh, electrical equipment to find out the difference when I'm grounded to the earth and when I'm not. So I actually grounded myself to my to the earth one night during sleep. And I instantly fell asleep. I woke up the next morning and I thought, wow, there's something going on here because normally I don't sleep well. And oftentimes I have to take Advil or some kind of pain med because I had so much pain in my body. And then after that, I just playing around with a couple of my neighbors and said, you got to try this because you're going to sleep better. One of them came over the next day and he said, you know, my arthritis, do you think it could have anything to do with that? Because my arthritis is way down. And I said, I don't think so. I think it's just sleep. Then I recognized that my pain had gone way down and chronic pain. I had back surgery, knee surgery. I played tennis. I skied for 30 years. You know, I was, and I grew up on as a cowboy that would go out and ride steers on the weekend just for fun. <laughs> you know, going on a rodeo circuit in Montana because we didn't have anything else to do. Uh, but anyhow, so I had lots of pain and lots of issues. And uh, all of a sudden I recognized my pain had pretty much resolved. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. So I, uh, I had AOL, the computers, everything back in 97, 98 in that period. But you, it was, had no access to anything. Uh, but we didn't have Google. We didn't have all these kind of things. And um, all we have is Nexus, Lexus, and we can go in and do data retrieval. But <clears throat> anyhow, I couldn't find anything in the current literature that would explain cause of pain and, and or why grounding would resolve pain. I had no idea. And so that set us off on a search in which we started doing studies, one after another. Uh, and I think there's probably close to 30 now. And, um, <clears throat> and then, so what we would do is we would ground people and measure the, you know, everything that goes on in the body, all of the biomarkers, uh, all of the uh, neurological uh, readings, brain waves. You, you name it. And, and no matter what you do, every time you do, uh, you ground a person, there's a shift in the energy in the body and the nervous system. There's kind of a discharge, a calming effect that comes over the body almost instantly. And then after that, the body becomes negative, meaning it's the electrons from the earth um, automatically migrate up the wire, you know, into, you know, like on a, for instance, the bed pads that we use or whatever. And so they're grounded. They're like, like taking a piece of earth and putting it in your bed. And then you lay on it. It's like laying in the grass outdoors. So that's the concept here. And so the, the benefit is um, it's quite remarkable, but, but the mechanism of action was what we chased for 12 years. 
why does grounding reduce inflammation in the body? Why does grounding reduce pain? And that's when I ran into a, a Dr. Steven Sinatra, who was a cardiologist uh, back in back east and uh, at a show one time. And he says, Clint, he said, if you're reducing pain, you need to be researching inflammation because you can't have pain unless you have inflammation first. And I didn't know what it was because to me that was like you, you sprained an ankle or something and blew up. And um, but he said, no, inflammation is different. He said it's it's um, it's what promotes, um, you know, cardiovascular disease, cancer, all of these modern health disorders. And <clears throat> but they didn't really and nobody really understood how could grounding be affecting inflammation until one day I was reading a paper and I saw the uh, description of a neutrophil, which is a white blood cell. And every time you have a pathogen, which we do all day long with cells that need to be disposed of and things we breathe and eat and whatever. But anyhow, if you have a pathogen in your body, the white, the immune system sends over a white blood cell. In this case, a neutrophil. And the neutrophil is a kind of a jelly-like cell. It'll wrap itself around the pathogen. And then it'll actually release reactive oxygen species. Reactive means they're electrically charged molecules that can rip an electron from a pathogen, break down its shell and destroy the pathogen. And that's all perfect and that's normal. And that's what the immune system has been doing for since the beginning of time. Um, <clears throat> the problem came along in 1960, we started putting shoes on and we started insulating ourselves from the earth and our body is no longer negative, it becomes positive, like the atmosphere. So when you have a normal immune response to a pathogen, if there are and the neutrophil comes over and reduces the radical, if there's any excess reactive oxygen species left, then they're only going to last a few nanoseconds, they're going to steal an electron from an adjacent cell. And, and damage that, so it's collateral damage. Then there's a message back to the immune system. Hey, something's still here getting me. Another neutrophil comes over, cleans up that collateral damage. And again, promotes more collateral damage. And that's what's known as chronic inflammation or autoimmune disorder. The immune system is functioning, but it's actually creating the fire that it's trying to put out. So that was a discovery that we made. And then the second discovery was, well, how did these electrons get from the earth up the wire through into the, into the body and how do they migrate and, and, and how, how do they prevent this collateral damage? So what happened then what we learned was we started grounding people and we did one major study and, and it's, we grounded, uh, I think it was a dozen doctors in back in Connecticut at a special event just to try to figure this out. And then we drew their blood and we looked at it and then we grounded it and, and the blood was all thick and sticky like everybody's is. When, when you're insulated from the earth, everybody's blood is thick and sticky. That's why uh, so many people today are on blood thinners. I mean, almost you know, a huge amount of people. And, and then they tell you, if you are on blood thinners, don't start eating a lot of spinach because the greens will make your blood too thin. So, you know, green food is like, you know, healthy, good stuff, you know. But anyhow, um, so what we learned was that when you ground the body, the electrical surface charge on a red blood cell, the blood vessels have a charge, you know, on the, on the parameter of the of the, set of the uh, blood vessel. And then the red blood cells have a, uh, an electrical surface charge, meaning a, 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 they're charged with electrons. But as soon as we ground them, the person, then we have a 300% increase in the negative surface charge on red blood cells. They equalize with the earth. They ground, they're like grounded. I mean, they're, it's, a, it's a balance, an electrical balance with the earth. And so what happens when you increase the negative charge on a red blood cell, 
They're like little negative magnets. If you put them together, they push each other apart. They can't stick together. So with thick blood, there's not enough free electrons and the blood cells stick together. And as soon as you increase the negative surge charge, then they repel each other. Then the blood gets thin, can get in and out of the capillaries, oxygenate the tissue, remove the debris, give up a few electrons, pick up a little bit more a minute later as it recirculates through the body and picks them up, whether you're barefoot or however you're touching the earth or laying on a mat or a pad. And <clears throat> so the, what grounding is about is normalizing your blood viscosity, the thickness of your blood, so it can oxygen, properly oxygenate, oxygenate the tissue and reduce inflammation, reduce, uh, or it, it'll reduce inflammation, but more importantly, it prevents further inflammation because now your body has lots of free electrons uh, on the red blood cells and then also on all other cells in the body that carry an electrical charge. They are more negative when you're grounding. So negative means no charge. And the only thing a negative will give up free electrons to reduce charge. So <clears throat> I hope I didn't go too fast there. <laughs> it was excellent. And I think that really at the heart of it is that it really is, uh, I really one of the most amazing health discoveries ever because knowing that uh, it is the inflammation that, you know, the chronic kind of silent inflammation that then manifests as disease in the body, be it cancer, be it Alzheimer's, be it whatever it is. And we know that grounding, right? There's so much research now showing that connecting with the earth, yes, yes that those electrons, that that, you know, as you said, it, it, it you know, it reduces and it prevents further, right? Yes. Then it's a no brainer. Right. Which makes me think, why isn't everybody in the whole entire world shedding their shoes or getting grounding pads or something else? I have a grounding pillowcase. Right. Why isn't everybody doing this? Well, first of all, it's unbelievable. It was unbelievable to me. It took us 20 years to do. You know, we had a, a dozen, two dozen uh, researchers and scientists working with it. Nobody believed it. Uh, and, you know, it's not possible to think that take my shoes off and I'm going to get better. Uh, until you experience it, it's challenging to believe it. And so the beauty of grounding is you can take one of these mats and just lay it on the on the sheet. I mean, on the bed. Yeah, on the you know on the mattress or put it under the sheet, and you lay it down one time, and then then after that you just every night you come home you go to, you do what you normally do just go to sleep go to bed and the pad works all night long every night that's where we put our focus because that was what we thought that's that was the product that we thought we could uh, provide the most benefit with the least amount of effort uh, and no compliance just lay down go to sleep <laughs> do what you normally do and um, <clears throat> and there are other products for you know if people have acute uh, flares, arthritic flares, and so on. Uh, they, we have electrode patches that you can put on the site of uh, the flare or you know, wherever and calm. Uh, it, it's like if you have a flare, meaning a cytokine storm, uh, or like a respiratory storm, you put a patch there. And what it does, it floods the body with free electrons and stops the cytokine storm. It just normalizes the, the immune functioning. And um, <clears throat> so I'm not sure I got lost there for a minute. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> great because it's, it's, it's so simple that it is unbelievable, right? That's why, I mean, I was very skeptical myself the first time and I saw the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought, which is available on YouTube, I thought, there's no way it could be this simple. And then I tried it. I was actually on vacation with my family uh, in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And I, you know, we were at a beach house and I was like, OK, I'm going to just put my feet on the sand all day and just mm -hmm. kind of notice. And then I came home and I started putting my feet on the grass in between uh, clients. And in the evenings, I'll go for I, I go for a walk with my husband. We live in a golf course community on uh, evenings when we walk the dog. She goes on the grass. I take my shoes or flip flops off and I walk on the grass. And it has made a tremendous difference for me personally. And that is why, and of course, I also have uh, some of the other products that you mentioned, you know, in terms of in the home 
because not everybody can go outside in their weather wherever they are, I live in Arizona, so I have the privilege of sunshine most days. Um, but I want to know from you um, a little bit about um, some of the stories, if you will, or case studies. I know one of the ones that I uh, saw in the movie and also read about was the, uh, the premature babies. Would you be willing to share a little bit about that uh, study? Um, sure. Um, <clears throat> the babies that are the most challenged are the, uh, what they call preemies. They're, you know, they're, they're uh, premature. I mean, their delivery is early. The biggest problem they have with them, they have to take them away from the mother and they put them in incubators. And these incubators are full of uh, static electricity and heat fields and, and just charge. I mean, uh, positive charge, like static electricity and so on. And so <clears throat> their, their, their biggest issue with them is, um, you know, they're full of, uh, they're full of cortisol. I mean, they're fight or flight. I mean, they're, it's automatic in a baby. And so they are totally stressed. Uh, they develop the colics and all of the issues that come with, um, you know, babies. And so they have to protect them uh, uh, in the uh, incubators because the incubator's doing certain things and oxygen and so on. But on the other hand, the babies, babies are really traumatized because they are not in contact with their mom, which would be very helpful. And they're uh, in a plastic environment. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyhow, so what they did is they took, I think it was 28 babies and they took a patch, an electrode patch, connected it to a cord and plugged it into the electrical ground in the, in the, in the uh, intensive care unit. And then they put the patch on the babies. And within like, you know, a minute or so, then the vagal tone normalized. And what vagal tone is, is you have a sympathetic, which is sensing everything in your environment and your nerves are rea reacting to it. And you have a parasympathetic, which is, producing, um, you know, hormones and uh, to calm down, to slow down the, uh, to dampen the cortisol that's being from released and secreted into the system by the parasympathetic. Um, <clears throat> so the baby is screaming, you know, fight or flight, and then the parasympathetic is trying to calm it down. And <clears throat> when the baby gets too excited, then the cortisol becomes too elevated and the parasympathetic cannot calm down. And that's what causes the crying, the screaming and the, and the chronic uh, fight or flight state. So within a minute of putting a patch on the baby that it normalized, it balanced the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Uh, it improved heart rate variability by some huge number, meaning their heart was more rather than being locked tight, the heart now could release and, and move and the baby was, but the baby was calm and they, and they, um, so I mean, it just it normalized blood viscosity and it um, um, normalized heart rate variability, but most important it's uh, the, uh, you know, the sympathetic and parasympathetic could calm the fight or flight or uh, normalized vagal tone. Normalized vagal tone to you means uh, de-stress, decompress. You know, the stress is gone. You're no, no longer fight or flight and so on. And, um, and that's a big deal. So, I mean, to, to have that kind of an impact on a premature baby, I mean, there's no placebo effect. This is real. So the thing we learned from that is we can put a patch on an adult and it will calm the sympathetic nervous system, uh, improve heart rate variability, normalize blood viscosity, just like it does in a child. I mean, in a, in a preemie. Thank and, you for sharing that. It is so tremendous to think that something so simple as connecting, right, to grounding wires could create such stabilization, right? right. And such immense improvements in that vagal tone, which we know is such a measure yep. of infant health. So, you know, this is just one example of how this could be used. And one of the things that's coming up for me now is 
um, in the introduction, um, I mentioned that uh, there was an event from early childhood for you that kind of helped to inspire this movement, this research. Would you be willing to share that story with us? Sure. You know, the, the, the thing that, you know, to put this all in perspective, um, animals that live in the wild, cancer does not, by and large, it doesn't exist in animals that live in the wild, nor does MS, lupus, autism, cardiovascular disease, cancer, any of these things. On the other hand, animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest autoimmune diseases similar to their disowners, to their owners. Like 50% of animals that live indoors die of cancer, just like owners, and so on and so on. Uh, but anyhow, the point is to help people put this in perspective, you know, the animal world. Um, and but in this case, I grew up in Montana. And um, some of my best friends growing up were Native Americans because we lived out in the sticks. And um, they had you know, they still lived in the teepees back in those days. They had the houses that the government came in and built, but they, you know, they watered the horses in there and moved back into the teepees. This is, <laughs> this was in the fifties. Um, so anyhow, but, but anyhow, one time we came home from school and we were, you know, we're like kids, we always go over to each other's home and whatever. But <clears throat> one of the kids, well, one day we were going into one of the teepees and the mother looked at us and says, get those shoes off. They'll make you sick. Never thought too much about it until 34 years later. Uh, but anyhow, they, in that same group or that tribe or those friends of mine, um, <clears throat> we came home one night and one of the, my best friends, his sister had scarlet fever. And they had been to the doctors and whatever, and there was nothing they could do. Uh, back then, it was one of those diseases that there wasn't a lot you could do. And uh, so anyhow, we came home that one night or we were playing. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but they were digging a pit, just a little pit in the ground about so deep. And then they put some sand, uh, straw in it. And then they built a fire of the outside not too far away, but enough for warmth to come over. And <clears throat> one of the grandparents or one of the elders of the community sat there. They had the fire, but they took the girl, little girl, and they put her in the pit on the earth. And then they covered her with a blanket and she just stayed there. I mean, and um, I didn't know what to think. And I mean, it was just like nobody knew whether she would live or anything. Anyhow, so a couple, three or four days later, she was up moving around, everything was whatever. But during that whole time, this elder, they sat there and they stayed with her and kept that fire going and kept her in the ground for all that period. And she, you know, four or five days later, she recovered from that. And it seemed like an odd story, but that is a common practice in so many cultures throughout the world. It's unbelievable, I had no idea. And, uh, but yeah, the, so what they did was grounded her. And when they grounded her, the storm, the, 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 inflama the inflammatory storm that was going on between the scarlet fever and the immune system um, <clears throat> is when she's not grounded, then a lot of collateral damage was occurring. But as soon as they put her in the earth, then the immune system no longer had to fight the collateral damage that it was creating. It could go to work on uh, reducing the, the scarlet fever and and that's how it recovered. In fact, I've seen so many issues over the years that, you know, people, as soon as they get grounded, it's like, it's like almost like a miracle. But if your body is full of inflammation, your doctor says, hey, you got an inflammation problem. And a lot of people have it and they don't even think they have it. But as soon as they go, they find out, oh, your inflammation's up. Okay, <clears throat> as long as you have inflammation, your immune system is compromised because now it has to spend all of its resources cleaning up the, trying to clean up the collateral damage that it itself is creating because the body's not grounded or short of electrons. So <clears throat> as soon as you get grounded, you put that, you stop that process because now that there's enough free electrons in the body that prevents, reduces the existing damage and prevents further collateral damage, then the immune system can go back 
You clean up that mess one time, then it can go back to normal functioning and maintain health, maintain, rebuild the body every night, rebuild, you know, recover and, and restore health. And if you don't have health, if you have pain, if you have stress, you have problems in your body, if you have, no matter what, you, there's something you're doing that's compromising your immune system. Something's going on that's compromising your immune system. You need to find out what the heck is because the health is the body's most natural state. The immune system only knows to do one thing, return to return the body to normal. And, you know, we, met, we were talking about athletes earlier. We use, we have a lot of high profile athletes that use grounding. They use it for one thing, recovery. They have to recover nightly, daily. They have to get, they have to stay in the game. They have to be able to get up in the morning and, 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 and do it again. And, and especially when they're, when, when they're in season, we grounded the tour de France, U S postal team, the discovery team for seven, eight years in a row, all the riders finished the game. I mean, finished the races unheard of, um, people have serious injuries. They would ground them every night throughout the race, uh, put patches on them, do whatever. And they kept, they kept them in the race and, you know, they won a lot of the races. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's what did grounding do? Grounding just promoted better recovery. So we had some instances, I mean, for instance, the, on the average, when you sleep grounded, if you have an injury, you will recover. Uh, it didn't take about 30, 40% of the time that it would normally take because you, your immune system is not having to fight that oxidative stress. Because when you're grounded, then your body's flooded with the free electrons. So that doesn't occur. It's like the animals in the wild. It does not occur. Inflammation does not occur in the, in the wild animal kingdom um, because they're all grounded. And, and we were all grounded. And the earth is, is we are, you know, we, have, we, we think of ourselves differently, but, but we are everything on the earth. We're all related. We're all one thing I mean, we're all connected to each other and when we disconnect from the earth we lose that that communication system that the rhythms and the you know the it's like the cortisol study we did at 4 a.m cortisol skyrockets when you're grounded when you're not grounded it still goes up but it doesn't go up like it but what it is it's the rhythms of the earth that are where our bodies dance to the to these rhythms and to these we, when we synchronize and sing with the earth, our bodies dance with the earth, however you want to say it, then everything is, goes in back to normal. It's when we disconnect from the earth and we, we don't eat live food anymore, we don't exercise, like, and we're wearing shoes. Our bodies are on fire. We have to put that fire on. We have to get back, reconnect. You know, it's nature. We are nature. We, we need to reconnect with their source, the energy. And thank you, Clint. And there's so much research now about what you're sharing. This is not just a, you know, a nice concept. No. You know, you and I spoke briefly about the global tree monitoring mm -hmm. network that the Institute of Heart Math is doing yep. research on literally putting sensors on trees, all kinds of trees, seeing that trees actually have an intelligence. They have an awareness. We have proof now that interconnectedness, we, uh, may be able to use that research to be able to forecast when earthquakes are going to be coming just based on uh, the connection between human emotion and trees. And, yes. and so that research already exists. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And so what I'm curious about now is like, I think of my cell phone and the iPad and all of the devices that we have and all the kind of electromagnetic disturbances caused by that. What can grounding uh, help with in, in that area? Well, in, in the communications industry, there's only one reason we ground everything and shield everything. That's to prevent EMI, electromagnetic interference. So <clears throat> when I first recognized that uh, grounding was beneficial for health, I ran into all of the people who were in the EMF community and all these people selling devices and all kinds of services and so on. Anyhow, one day I told them, I said, you know, you guys, if you want to shield the body, all you have to do is ground it. 
like you do a refrigerator or anything else. And then it's automatically protected. Uh, your skin is a quasi Faraday cage and, um, you know, electric field. They, they don't. So if you're not grounded, your body is an antenna that attracts static electricity and electric fields. So anybody who is not grounded to the earth is these, you have these electric fields and stuff crawling around these charges crawling around on your, on your body. They, they cause the they elevate the sympathetic uh, response. I mean, so you have a chronically elevated sympathetic state, and <clears throat> and that causes cortisol to um, elevate in your blood, and then the parasympathetic, which tries to dampen that, it eventually it's limited resources, so it eventually becomes exhausted and can't it can no longer function. So that's exhausted adrenals. You lose your energy, you lose. And then the cortisol begins creating inflammation. The inflammation creates more pain. Pain creates anxiety, irritability, oftentimes depression. And so it's a vicious loop. And all you got to do is get grounded, stop, you know, stop the cortisol, <laughs> calm the sympathetic nervous system, restore the adrenals and, re and, and restore health. But so as far as the electric fields, all those things, it's, I don't think there is, I mean, they're, they're not going to cause cancer, but what they are going to do is they're, they're, they're just an environmental stressor. And, and so it's like, you know, static electricity. If you have carpets and rubber shoes, I mean, you're charging your, every step you take, you're creating charges on your body. Um, but anyhow, so the point is these grounding automatically protects you from electro, low, low frequency electromagnetic fields. Uh, it's just a no-brainer. That's why we ground everything and shield everything in the communications industry. We don't do it for, I mean, it's to prevent electromagnetic interference. So get grounded and you automatically protect it from this electromagnetic interference. Thank you. So there are clearly many, many benefits to grounding. So at this point, I imagine the people listening that are not yet familiar with this, they might be saying, okay, tell me, what do I need to do? Where do I do it? How often do I do it for how long and so on? What are the best kind of recommendations? Okay, well, <clears throat> I always tell everybody the first thing you need to do is, especially women, uh, after you come home from work, you need to go outdoors and put your feet on the earth for 30 minutes. And, and I call it coyote juice. I mean, you drain that. <laughs> You've been chased all day by coyotes. <laughs> you know, your kids, your, your work, your boss, your traffic, all that kind of stuff. So you need to come home and drain the stress. And, and if you can't do anything else or to learn about this, just go outdoors, put your feet on the earth for 30 minutes. And, and you'll sense a calmness come over your body. Your, your skin color is going to improve. Your demeanor is going to change. And you're going to feel better. You're going to be able to breathe better and you're going to be able to sleep better. So, but on the other hand, if people, most people have a lot of chronic health issues because of our li lifestyle, these things build up over the years and they don't disappear overnight. The body has to heal and recover. And the only way you can do that is you have to put the fire out. So sleeping grounded is the best thing that we've been able to offer. And that's just a carbon mat that you can it's the size of the mattress or the or you can have one that's the half a mattress and you just put it on your mattress you can put your sheet over the top of it or you can put it on top if your health is really compromised sleep on it until you get well sleep on it until the pain goes away if you have pain you have inflammation you got it, it, it isn't it's not about reducing pain it's reducing the inflammation it's causing the pain the pain will go away you know the inflammation is out when the pain goes away um, so, but anyhow, um, that's the most important product. And then the second one for, a, is a pillow cover, carbon pillow cover, and you put your pillow inside of it, and then you can put your pillowcase over the top of it, or a lot of people sleep directly on it. And it's like most women, you know, after they sleep on it for a couple, three nights, they look five, 10 years younger. I mean, because it, it does, it oxygenates the tissue your skin and, and it, you know, inflammation is aging. So if you want to reduce aging, stop the inflammation. 
And but anyhow, you'll have improved circulation. But the calming effect, you're close coupled with the earth. You're 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 sitting there, your body is resonating with the earth. And so the pillows are really good and they and they help push away these electric fields in the bedroom, uh, in the walls and stuff. And um, <clears throat> so those are the two that are probably essential, I think, for most people if their health is compromised. Um, beyond that, the patches or le just electrode patches they can put on wherever the pain is, the flare, flaring pain. And um, it connects to an electrical ground and it'll just reduce the pain in just a few minutes. I mean, it's a miracle. They call it a miracle pain patch. Uh, it's kind of an odd terminology. <laughs> but but anyhow, it, it stops the pain. And there's no, a lot of people can't take drugs anymore. A lot of people can't take, you know, some of the painkillers and so on. And so here's a simple remedy that is basically free. It's the earth. Um, and, and again, you, I have to say these products do nothing in and of themselves. They are just like an extension cord between you and the earth. And so, so they're not, I mean, it's the earth's energy that produces the results. The paths by themselves do nothing except conduct earth's energy to your body during sleep. So it's, and you can't, you can't ground yourself too much. The animals in nature have no issues with being grounded 24 seven. In fact, if you were grounded 24 seven, you could never have any of these modern health disorders because mm. um, your immune system would be just on top of that. Um, I'm sorry. For, uh, this is very helpful. Thank you, Clint. And you know, what's going through my mind is my youngest daughter is going to be having uh, knee surgery in a couple of weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a basketball player and she tore something. So um, one of the things that the surgeon said to her is that inflammation is going to be uh, kind of the, the big issue after the surgery. And so I'm going to make sure that she is grounded. Yeah. And you, you know, the patch kit that, the, the, you know, the ground therapy patch kit um, <clears throat> that has two coil cords in it and you know, electrode patches. So you'll put one at the site of the, the surgery, one of the, and then put one on the very bottom of the foot, and she'll have an ex, you know an ex, ex, expedited recovery. Oh wow! Thank you. I did. I was just going to have her kind of be on the mat or be outside on the grass. You know, for... well, all of all of that is good too. But if the pain comes up and there's, if pain is inflammation, if the inflammation is up, put a patch near the site of the incisions, and one on the bottom of the foot, and then sleep with it until she recovers and it'll help it'll expedite the recovery and it'll reduce and prevent that inflammation that's going to slow the healing and prevent you know and can create complications thank you we will do that but if nothing else bare feet on the grass <laughs> <is> perfect <laughs> well, now but you know on the products uh ultimate uh, longevity.com has a full range of uh, of all of these products. And um, again, they're, you, you buy them one time, you lay them down you, and you just, uh, they're, I, I don't like to sell product, but uh, it's essential that these products are available because people have no option. We can't go back out and sleep outdoors on the earth. We're not going to anyway, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, so uh, I would check there and, um, the Earthing movie um, is available for those who need more information. Uh, there's a that's a very authentic uh, piece of work. Uh, it has everybody from, you know, Chopra to FDA people. I mean, all kinds of docs and so on, and 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 people and talk about their experience. Uh, school teachers, um, um, just a, a good variety of folks people with MS, people with, you know, serious health issues and, and the benefits that they got and how fast they got. Okay, so, so anyhow, it's, uh, I don't know what else to say other than um, you can't afford not to do this. <laughs> it's free and it's life changing. And if you need to be grounded uh, throughout the night, which I would highly recommend, especially for anybody over, 27 <laughs> seems to be when it all starts then um 
and these extension cords, these ground grounding products are, are really essential for you. I am deeply, deeply grateful for all of your work in this area. This is I, a passion, not a job for you. I, I know that 100% from our conversation, from everything that I've read and heard. And, and I invite everybody listening to take their shoes off, go outside, connect with the earth, and just see what shifts for them to just be curious. Notice what happens if they're experiencing any pain, any shifts. Notice what happens in their ability to, um, you know, kind of feel ease throughout the day in terms of kind of the, the stress relief that goes on and to explore it some more, to go to the website and if they're curious to look into some of the products. Um, but really, as you said, this is free for everyone. Right. And we get to come back and reconnect with the earth and uh, and get those electrons that we really need for our energy yep. and yep. Uh, to heal. Well, thank you once again, Clint. Really deeply grateful for your time, your expertise, and uh, and for um, sharing this most important health discovery ever with us. Okay. Thank you for having me on, and namaste. <laughs> thank you, namaste.